Have you ever had a relationship with someone who consistently made you feel bad about yourself, but yet you struggled to call it abuse? There are definitely a few reasons why this can happen. And today we're talking about one big one that I think a lot of people overlook, and that is covert abuse or covert tactics often used by a covert narcissist or someone else who definitely wants to make you feel bad about yourself, but doesn't want to look like the bad person. And this leads to the type of abuse that I often call death by a thousand paper cuts. Now, when you're with someone who is abusive in this way, one of the reasons why it's so difficult to pinpoint why you feel so bad about yourself and why you're questioning yourself all the time and you feel like your self-worth is in the toilet is because their abuse is subtle. And although there are almost always big things too, things that you feel like you can't talk about to other people when you're in the relationship, a lot of the abuse does end up being small and consistent. These little emotional paper cuts become so consistent that you know to expect them. My name is Christina and this channel is dedicated to helping you identify and deal with the aftermath of emotional abuse and especially covert emotional abuse. And this often happens at the hands of a covert narcissist or a vulnerable narcissist, which is more the technical term. So if you are or think you were in a relationship with a covert narcissist, I have a free download with a checklist that goes through all the stages of narcissistic abuse. So you can see how this type of abuse might be present in your own relationship. Okay, so let's get to it. One covert tactic that is almost always present when there is covert abuse is constant criticism. So this is not just one thing, of course, but this person criticizes you so often that you come to expect the criticism before you do or say things. It could get to the point where you even hear that person's voice in your head when they're not even there. Again, what we're talking about here are patterns and this person is going to be hypercritical of you specifically. And so you may notice that other people can act in exactly the same way that you're acting. They can say exactly the same things that you said and that person won't be critical of them. They will only be critical of you. But another thing that's really common is that you might get that criticism when you least expect it. So if you're presenting something to this person that is totally aligned with their beliefs and values, and you're expecting in some way that they're going to validate you, or you might expect something like, yeah, I totally agree with you because you know that they do, or they would, or if it was someone else, they would agree with them. And this very much describes what it's like to be with someone who is covertly abusive. When you let your guard down, the rug gets pulled out from under you. So another sign that you're with someone who's covertly abusive is, is that you feel like they have one foot out the door all the time. And there are so many reasons why you probably feel this way. One, they might've told you that they were about to leave, or they might always tell you every time you have an argument that they're out of here. If you don't turn this around, they're gone. And this is especially common if you're in a relationship with a covert narcissist, they will actually leave. They probably have left you before. They have left and come back. Maybe they've left and come back so many times that there's no way you could be comfortable in this relationship. But regardless of what has happened in the past, the overwhelming feeling you get is that there's no attachment there, that that person can leave at any moment and just cut you off. You might not want to believe that, but unfortunately, if you are with a covert narcissist, it's true. And on some level, you sense it. You know that there's a connection that's missing there. So another covert tactic that can really eat away at your self-esteem is shutting you down or stonewalling. So imagine you bring something to somebody's attention and they don't want to talk about it, right? They might completely shut you out. And I have to admit that I've been guilty of this one too, long before I started learning about narcissism. And this is one of the reasons I asked the question when I started learning about all this, am I the narcissist? For me and many people, this was a learned behavior, but just as I learned to do it, I learned to stop doing it. So shutting down is a much more passive, aggressive way to stop the conversation. But somebody who is covertly abusive may also be a little bit more overt in their delivery, and they may talk over you or scream over you to shut you down. Because if they're screaming over you, there's no way they can hear you. Not like they would listen to you anyway, but 
you definitely know that you're not getting your point across and you feel like you're shouting into a void, then really all of this combined is why it feels so lonely to be in a relationship with someone like this. Because you feel like you're not being seen, you're not being heard, you're not being understood, and you're not wrong. So another covert tactic that will eat away at your self-esteem is when another person says really hurtful things, but they validate it by saying, well, that's just the truth, or that's just how I feel. And this one can get a little bit tricky because sure, we're allowed to talk about our feelings, right? Even if other people don't like them. So I want to give you an example of what this might look like in an abusive relationship. So instead of somebody verbally abusing you and saying you're ugly and you're stupid, the person says something like, you know, I'm just really not attracted to you. But you know what? It's fine. We can just keep going the way we are. So they don't want to leave the relationship and there's no reason really for them to tell you that they don't find you attractive. The only outcome of that conversation of that person sharing their feelings was that you got hurt. And so, yes, we can say things inadvertently to hurt other people's feelings, but usually these things are a little bit more obvious. They're things that people know not to say to each other. Things like, I don't think you're so smart, or I don't think you're so attractive, or I don't see how anyone would want to be with you. You can say, oh, well, those were just my feelings. I was just sharing my feelings with you. But when you continually do that to someone for no purpose other than to share your feelings, it's abuse. Because all you're doing in sharing your feelings is hurting that person and attacking their self-esteem. Now, on the other hand, if you were to say, you know what, I'm not attracted to you, I think we should break up. Kind of a jerk move, I think you'll agree. But I wouldn't necessarily call that abuse or abusive because there's a purpose behind it. They're saying, listen, I'm gonna break up with you because of this. So then the person who gets their feelings hurt in all of this can walk away with hurt feelings, of course, but then move on with their lives. And they can surround themselves with other people who might build them up, right? But when you're in an abusive relationship and someone is convincing you that they're not being abusive and it's just you, you're just being too sensitive, you can't handle their feelings, especially when there have been bigger things that they've done throughout the relationship that may have been even more emotionally traumatizing. There's something called a trauma bond that takes hold and it's very much as a result of things like this and intermittent reinforcement. So in between those moments where they're telling you that, you know, you're nothing or you're not smart or you're not attractive, they're telling you that they love you and they're telling you that you're their person or whatever it is they think you want to hear. And this type of abuse can really reinforce the concept that, well, you're lucky this person is putting up with you, right? Because they're sending the message that there are things that are wrong with you. You know, they're very clear. They don't like these things about you, but you know what? I'm willing to let it slide. Good luck finding someone else who's going to do the same. So these things really trigger insecurities that we all have. I mean, everyone has some level of insecurity. And especially if you're getting into a relationship with somebody like this in your adult life, you probably already had some insecurities before you met this person. And so things like this, subtle, covert, emotional paper cuts like this can really, really eat away at what self-esteem you do have. So another covert tactic is blame shifting. And this one goes hand in hand with gaslighting. So whenever you want this person to take accountability for maybe, let's say, hurting your feelings, they might tell you that, well, you have to take responsibility for your part in this. So going back to the example about someone saying, talking about their feelings, and they feel like you're unattractive. So if you were in that situation, you might say, well, wow, that was really hurtful, right? And why would you say something like that? And you might try to get some accountability out of the person who said it. And instead of them saying, yeah, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that and meaning it, they might say something like, well, you were talking about people being attractive. And so you started this whole conversation. So if you didn't want to hear the truth, then you shouldn't have done that. So in this example, they ended up saying something that you really probably shouldn't say to anybody. And yet it was your fault. 
And so this kind of goes back to that classic Darvo phrase. So when you try to hold a narcissist accountable for anything, really what you'll get is it's a whole lot of Darvo. It's deny, attack, and reverse victim and offender. So they might completely gaslight you and say, you know, I never said that or whatever. It didn't happen that way. They might attack you and say, well, you were asking for it. And then they might turn it around and say, well, you know what? I'm a victim because you called this out. How do you think it makes me feel that you think I would just out of nowhere say something like that, that I would say something so hurtful to you for no reason? But the thing is, they actually did. And the more you allow all of this into your life, the easier it is for you to take responsibility for things that are not your fault. So going back to number one, the constant criticism, that's something that gets you to doubt yourself. Feeling like the person has one foot out the door, that makes you feel like if you say something, this is gonna be over. The rug's gonna be pulled out from under you and it's gonna be all your fault, right? The thing is, it's not your fault and it's not your fault any of this is happening. So another covert tactic, I'm gonna call covert isolation. So people who are abusive often will isolate their victims from their inner circle. And that can be done in a very overt way. They could even forbid you from talking to or seeing people that are in your life. But when it's done in a much more covert way, you get the feeling that this person doesn't care who you talk to. It's fine, you can talk to anybody you want to, but there are some things that you can't talk about. Some things are off limits and they make sure you know what those things are. They make sure you know to keep their secrets. I'm 100% on board with not trying to hurt people, no matter who it is, but it's not our job to protect people who are abusive, and it's not our job to try to cover up abusive behavior. So this, I think, brings up an important conversation, and I will just pose it as a question. When you hear someone talking about someone else's abusive behavior, which do you see as a problem? The fact that someone's talking about it? or the fact that someone was abusive. Because I know to a lot of you watching this channel, the answer is very clear and obvious, but it's not as clear and obvious to everyone. And that's not always because the person who doesn't get it is abusive themselves. It might just be that that's how they were raised. You don't talk about this. You don't share the family secrets, even if you're hurting because of it. So another covert tactic that will attack your self-esteem is belittling you in front of others. So I have an example that I feel like drives this one home pretty well. There was a time, long time ago, I was out at a dinner and we were seated with people we didn't know. And I asked a question and maybe it was a dumb question and that's okay, right? Like sometimes we ask dumb questions. We don't expect the people we're with to like draw attention to it, to everyone. I don't remember what the question was. It could have been dumb or not. I, I really don't know. That's not the point. The point is the reaction on that person's face, the person I was with, it was like disgust and horror. And then he instantly said something that like really shut me down and made me feel so dumb and small. And I was so embarrassed, I wanted to crawl under the table. And again, yes, this was something that was a pattern. There was a pattern of this happening in front of other people. And usually when it was people that I knew, it didn't hit me as hard. But in this particular instance, it was in front of strangers that we were just connecting with. It was, it was just incredibly embarrassing for me. But these kinds of things really can eat away at your self-esteem. Because, hey, let's be real here. We all, you know, we stick our foot in our mouth sometimes and we say things we shouldn't say or we ask questions that maybe we should already know the answers to. And whenever you're in one of those moments and you realize that, oh, wow, that was, I shouldn't have asked that, you feel bad and you beat yourself up. So being with someone who is covertly abusive, they're gonna be out there in your external environment beating you up too. So it's just an extra layer eating away at your insecurities. So if you've related to most of what I've talked about here today, please do take this as a sign to evaluate what's going on in this relationship and how you're feeling about yourself when you're in it. Because relationships really should be lifting us up. They should be helping us become better versions of ourselves, not the opposite. 
definitely not the opposite. So if you feel like your relationship is making you feel more insecure and less in touch with who you are as a person, if you feel like you have to hide parts of who you are because they're not acceptable to your partner, you might be in a relationship with somebody who is covertly abusive and you might even be in a relationship with a narcissist. And so if you're still figuring this out, I have another video that you're gonna find super helpful where I talk through 11 signs that you're with a narcissist. And you'll find that one right here.